Hey guys, this is gonna be video number three in the series of getting my heated seats working. If you haven't seen the other two videos, go ahead and watch them first. I will put a link to the playlist here so you can see all of the videos that are in the playlist. There's gonna be one fourth one coming after this one. So in video number one, we learned how to get the button modified so that it'll work for us for the heated seats. Video two, I showed you how to wire the relays that you're gonna need to actually actuate the heated seats when we apply power. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to run all the wires in the car, where they're gonna go, how to connect them up to the fuse panel. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. So this is where things stand currently. As you can see, the seat is removed. I have a seat removal video. It's really easy to take these things out. Um, and next, I just figured out how to disassemble the fuse box here so that we can add our new fuse. So this is going into A6, which is the factory spot for a heated seat if you had one from the factory, but I did not. So I made a separate video on how to add this. So here's the link to do that. Now, of course, an option if you don't wanna go this far is just to stick in the add a fuse. If you go that route, of course, you don't have to do all of this disassembly. You just stick it right into where the fuse would normally go in your fuse box. But I went that extra step to make it a little more factory looking when I'm done. So I just have my sub pulled out from behind the seat and out of the way for right now so I could get the seat out. But the next step I'm going to do is remove the center console. So I happen to have a video on how to do that if you don't know how. So that's what I'm going to work on next. Get this center console out because you probably know that these are the blanks in here where we're going to put our switches. And I have to figure out where underneath here to connect that wire that I was showing you that goes from the switch to the source somewhere that illuminates it when you turn the headlights on. So let me pull this out real quick and I will rejoin you. Oh, and I should mention before you start all of this, I would recommend putting the top down because it's a lot easier to get in here without it up. After using my own video just now to remember how to get this console out, it is out. You can see you don't have this wiring over here probably that is going to my amp. But you should see that these are the connectors that go to the switches for the windows. And they sell similar ones. Well, I don't know if they sell them, but they made similar ones that go to our heated seat switches that we kind of made by hand. This wire... I never even had plugged in, but I'm pretty sure that this was supposed to be plugged in to this little piece of that light right there. So there is a light with this connector, and I assume that is what is supposed to illuminate when you turn the headlights on to help you find things in your little tray in the center console. And I'm pretty sure that that's the wires that we are going to splice into to illuminate these switches. I'm gonna pull these blanks out so we can put our new switches in. Seems like the way to do that is just to press on the outside of this and it will pop the tab out and just slide out. So you can see the tabs on the edge of this are the same as the ones on our switches. Lock it in. So I'm just trying to do the same on this side. Right, this side seems stiffer. The other side just kind of popped right out pretty easily. Oh, maybe I just have to use more force on this one. Yep. Yeah. And one of them. Okay, got those out. So I brought the whole harness here that we created over to the table. You have these uh, wires already connected to them. Let's see if I even have to take the wires off or if I can Seems like I should just be able to pop it in. The wire's still on there. Yeah, there we go. Just be firm and it'll pop in there. And that's what it'll look like. So we can see from the bottom of the switch that this yellow wire is the illumination wire. And this is the illumination of that little LED in there. So we only really need a couple of inches of this to be able to tap into the wire over here is where I think it's gonna go. In preparation for the connector to the plug down here in this seat, 
I have already figured out that the two pins on the left, well, as you're looking at it here, the left top one is ground. You can see it's brown wire. And the next one over that's down on the bottom is the positive for that circuit. And that circuit controls the electric seat back tilting forward and backwards. And I just tested the other two and I did confirm that they are for the heated seat. I did that by using the power probe here. I have it connected to a battery and I just take its negative terminal and I can clip it right to that ground tab. And then with the power probe, I can press up to apply positive. So I'm applying 12 volts to this pin and I held it here for a couple of minutes. So I can just tell by feeling the inside of the bolster here and the bolster here that it was getting heat and the seats were heating up and working as expected. So I'm pretty sure that I can assume without testing that the brown wire is the ground on this thing and the blue is the positive. So now I just have to figure out the best way to splice the two wires, one from each of our switches into this. And I think what I'm going to do is in that terminal kit, we have these and half of them are uh, male, uh, female, half of them are male ends. So I am going to just cut the wire right about here and attach one of these female ends onto it. The red is the 18 to or six, 18 to 22 gauge, I think, something like that. The smaller one. The blue is the medium one, but they have the same size connectors. Just a wider hole at the bottom to accept a bigger wire. So I think the three wires twisted together. So the back end of this wire connected with the other two wires that are coming in. I think I can just twist them together and crimp it down here. And that way I can just connect the bunch right here with this. Okay, so I'm just thinking this through. When this is in the center console and you disconnect it and you pop it out, that's when you disconnect these things. So I'm gonna have to disconnect all four of these separately the next time I take it out and I'll just have to remember where they go. And this little connector is gonna be in here. So it's gonna look like this. So I really just really can solder them really close together so I can either solder the wires or use the uh, more of these whichever one you prefer I guess soldering is probably the more secure way to do it and the other thing I'm gonna have to think about before I finalize this is how to get all of these wires back to the box so if I assume that the one that I put together is gonna go under the driver's seat I have several wires that come up to our switch and it seems like it would probably be best just to tuck them under here and run them straight down under this. But this is pretty tight against here, so let me figure out a way to get them through. All right, so the yellow wire is gonna be cut off and connected to this wire. So the green one is actually our ground, so I could run it up and ground it over here where we have some other stuff grounded, but I'm going to have to ground the white wire down here and there's a good grounding point. So I think I'm just going to take the red, blue, and green. I'm going to disconnect them from the switch and pull them up through the carpet into here with some kind of wire puller. So since I have so many of these terminal ends and they are big and will restrict it coming through here, I'll probably just snip all of these off and then just pull the wires straight through. So when I do this again on the other side of the switch, I won't connect these yet. Since I know that my switching system works now, I won't need to test it ahead of time. <laughs> Famous last words. So I'll just uh, pull the wires themselves. So I've got one of these flexible grabby tools and it is flexible enough for me to just jam down there and tug the carpet away down here, reach up there and pull it in. So I think this will work for pulling them up. So first attempt is just with the little grabby claws themselves, holding onto the wire. Pull it up and 
see if it holds on well enough to pull them through. Make sure they have slack. Hey, look at that. I only lost one wire and one terminal. <laughs> I just pulled these wires out of the way and took the terminal off of the red one this time. <laughs> and there we go. I went ahead and cut the remaining terminals off just so I could redo them just to make sure they weren't damaged. And I put a few of the uh, heat shrink pieces on here and shrunk them on here to kind of keep these all together to act as zip ties. Okay, to recap, in case I was babbling, I cut this blue wire and I have the blue one with the two yellows coming into this connector. And then this connector has the blue wire on the other side. So all three of them should be spliced together with this connection and feeding into the switches. Just want to share my order of events that I'm doing things with you guys. So I just went ahead and wired up the second set. This is the uh, second set of four relays. It's going to go under the passenger seat. Now, while I didn't have to video it and I had already done it, it was much easier. So you'll see that all these connections are a lot cleaner and prettier. I didn't forget my heat shrink or get the wrong sizes or anything anywhere or have to redo any of the wiring. So just to show you what a complete set should look like, on this one, I have the power going to the seat here, and I already put a little uh, terminal connector on there. And then I have about four feet of red that is gonna run up to the switch, which I didn't put an end on yet, because we're gonna pull that through as I discovered. And on the white ones, Coming out of two and three that are connected, I also have about four feet of white that's going to go to a ground. And then the blue coming out of three is just a four foot blue that is going to run up to our switch. Hey, shop dog. And I'm going to have just a four foot piece of green that's not connected to anything so that I can pull the green, red, and blue wires up from the bottom of the seat to the console so that they can be connected to the switch. All right, my plan for the big wire that is coming out of here that goes to the fuse is to run it up under the carpet here and along the door sill right to here. So that means I have to take this thing off. So I see three little plastic things here I'm going to pop out. All right, so now that I have this thing pulled out and I see how tight it is in here, there's really not a lot of room for my thick wire. What I think I'm going to do is just kind of peel the carpet back some. Just tuck down here so I can peel the carpet back enough to just tuck the wire all the way down to the floor and have it run along the floor and then into here. So I'm just going to take the wire and tuck it under here. See it here, pull it all the way down. And the carpet kind of clips on right here. All right, make sure this lip goes on the inside of the carpet. So, put that under the carpet. Everything's back in place. And take our five millimeter. All right, don't over tighten these because you don't want to break that uh, little plastic tab back there. All right. Oh yeah, this is already open. That's why it's loose. Okay. All right, on this side, I'm not gonna film all of the work again, but you get the idea. I got this thing shoved down through the carpet from there, and I'm going to pull up the power wire. I'm gonna have the power wire run all the way up through here, just like I had it run from my amp and around the footwell over to the fuse box over there. And I'm gonna pull up these three wires, same way I did those three. In an effort to get all four wires at the same time though, I did electrical tape them onto the end of this to pull them up. 
So our power cable is coming up here. You can see it right here. It's just running along this side of our shifter. And we have it coming up through here and I have it zip tied. It's the black one in this bundle. And then at this point, those go through the firewall. Well, the red one goes through the firewall. The other ones go up to the head unit. So at this point, this one is gonna split off and we have a cable here connected to the accelerator pedal. So I have it, uh, you have to run it underneath that cable. And then I'm just gonna tuck it up here under the carpet all the way around to the fuse panel. So I've got the power for the driver side coming out over here, the power from the passenger side coming up from under the carpet here, and this is our fuse wire. So I'm just gonna cut this wire in half here, cut these here, and solder all three together. All right, here they are all three connected pre-solder, and don't forget to put a big old heat shrink on there. I now pronounce you wed. May no man or apex ever tear you apart. All right, here's the finishing touches with some heat shrink and a zip tie on these two. And we will tuck them under there and put the cover back on. I just popped the carpeted fuse panel trim piece back on and put the four screws in. How clean and nice does that look? With the scraps of this big wire that I had left that we ran the power to the seats with, I went ahead and put one spade connector on the front and a ring terminal on the other side. So I'm gonna mount this to the bottom of the seat for the ground and hook this one directly into the connector of the seat. Both sides of the floor have a 10 millimeter nut. So just loosen that, slip the ring terminal under, tighten it back. So the good news is that we are almost done. The bad news is that our car still looks like this while we're almost done. All right, that's about as much of this as I can take for right now. So I'm gonna wrap this up. We will call this one how to run the wiring and I will leave one final video still to come when I get around to reassembling everything, testing it and checking out the final product. So thanks for watching again, guys. I hope you have subscribed to the channel by now. Give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you on the next video.